Okay, so listen up. What has the ability to save billions, alter the way cities look, and prevent you ever getting a traffic violation? The answer, of course, is fully automated autonomous vehicles, or driverless cars to you and I. What are driverless cars? We've all heard about driverless cars being produced by leading tech companies, though automated vehicles, or at least part automated vehicles, have been around a lot longer than you may think. For example, sensors, cruise control and parking assist are all examples of how elements of driving have become automated over time. However, let's be clear, a truly autonomous vehicle is capable of operating without human intervention. So when will driverless cars arrive then? There have long been predictions that driverless cars are around the next bend, excuse the pun. Back in 2015, several well-known car giants had expected driverless cars to be on the road by 2020. However, mass market adoption has yet to materialize. This is not to say that driverless cars haven't clocked up thousands of drive hours, particularly in the US. In the short term at least, commentators have suggested that they will be used largely on closed settings, such as university campuses or business parks. If you're wondering whether this is particularly slow, let's briefly consider the previous breakthroughs in transportation technology. In the 1870s, cable cars overtook horse-drawn carriages, subsequently being overtaken by electric tramways some 40 years later, which were replaced by buses in the 1930s and then by cars in the post-World War II period. So, with this in mind, the adoption of driverless cars isn't particularly slow then. Now, how will they benefit the economy? Numerous studies have been conducted on the much-touted economic benefits of driverless cars, and it's important to point out that forecasts vary widely based on the scope of the research and the assumptions made. However, the typical benefits claimed include man-hours saved from not driving, which enable former drivers to be more productive in commute, the reduced traffic savings, and health savings due to fewer accidents. To support these claims, a 2013 Morgan Stanley forecast suggested driverless cars will save the US economy $1.3 trillion per year once they fully penetrate the market, while saving the world another $5.6 trillion per year. In addition, the US could save $158 billion in fuel costs, generate $500 billion in improved productivity, and avoid $480 billion in accident-related expenses. The potential impact on health is perhaps most important. The World Health Organization has indicated that 1.2 million people die in traffic-related accidents every year, mainly in developing countries. Of these accidents, research suggests that a staggering 90% are due to human error, which in theory, driverless cars could eliminate. According to the Eno Center for Transportation in the US, whose mission is to improve transportation, if only 10% of vehicles in the US alone were autonomous, this could reduce traffic deaths by nearly 1,000 each year and produce nearly $38 billion in economic and other savings. However, if 90% of vehicles were autonomous, almost 22,000 lives could be saved each year in the US alone. Eno goes on to estimate that the benefits could reach $447 billion. So why are driverless cars not already here then? Ultimately, any new mode of transportation replaces the existing one when the new mode becomes both technologically superior and economically competitive. This is a general theme that we'll see throughout this video. If you delve a little deeper, things get a little bit more complicated. Research suggests the main barrier to adoption is the lack of public trust in driverless cars, with significant concerns including privacy and security. A 2014 US insurance survey found that only 22% of respondents said they would feel comfortable allowing a loved one to ride in an autonomous vehicle. A large cause of concern stems from the security risks, as self-driving cars may be vulnerable to faulty equipment, traffic mishaps, and carjacking. This is in addition to security flaws like car hacking, remote access, and malware in the computer's array of onboard software. Another key issue is the affordability of driverless cars at the moment, which have so far proved prohibitively expensive for mass market adoption. It is reasonable to assume that driverless cars will be electric. As such, electric cars tend to run on expensive lithium-ion battery cells, 
with limited mileage per charge being a key barrier. However, as with all new technologies, advances in manufacturing, design and economies of scale will bring cost per kilowatt down. For example, research by Desjardin in 2017 suggested lithium-ion batteries will continue to increase capacity by 6-7% annually for a number of years to come. The role of regulation can also not be overlooked. With competing priorities on the legislative agenda, the absolutely mind-boggling amount of legislation required to fully integrate driverless cars into existing legislation is a real challenge. One key legislative issue is in the event of an accident, who is liable? Is it the owner, the manufacturer, the software developer, or another third party? This issue is key to whether driverless cars should or could be owned by individuals. Many consider private ownership to revolve around one of insurance. If a car doesn't have a driver, should a private individual have to bear liability, have insurance, or is it even worth it to have private ownership at all? To streamline the issue of liability, it has been suggested that ownership of driverless cars is kept in the hands of manufacturers and dealerships, being licensed for use only when needed for transportation. Imagine an Uber-like system, but with no driver. This will solve the problem of who will be liable if the car malfunctions. The liability will be in the hands of the manufacturer, who will bear the responsibility for maintaining the car's systems. If you're sitting there thinking that this sounds harsh, there are some very compelling reasons for this. It is well known that a portion of car owners do not keep their cars in good condition. In the realm of driverless cars, where maintenance is crucial and liability opaque, keeping ownership in the hands of manufacturers and dealers ensures better upkeep through routine maintenance. Not only that, but in a realm where cybersecurity is paramount, keeping vehicles out of the hands of private individuals, where they may be modified, reduces the risk. Now, it may not only be driving enthusiasts who lose out in a driverless world though. Who is likely to lose out? It will come as no surprise that the majority of those who drive as an occupation, think taxi drivers and truckers, are likely to require re-employment in the event that driverless cars become mainstream. According to CB Insights, 75-80% to of an Uber fare goes towards the driver, making a very compelling argument to bring in driverless cars then with unemployment likely to spill over to other areas as well, such as public servants and other forms of public transport, should driverless cars displace them. However, research suggests that for all of these job losses, the fallout from driverless cars will be net job positive, with an increase in the number of coders, maintenance, cleaners, and the positive externalities this will have via increased productivity in the wider economy. Fewer drivers, less cars on the road, and a shift to electric will inevitably impact the demand for oil. 63% of oil consumption comes from the transport sector. This will have far-reaching consequences for some of the largest companies on the planet, oil-dependent nations, and government finances, where considerable sums are raised through fuel taxes. Interestingly, government revenues across the world may also be slashed through fewer fines generated through traffic violations. After all, a driverless car will always obey the speed limit and the rules of the road. Now, it's not a stretch to imagine autonomous vehicles will physically alter the shape of cities. A perplexing part of modern cities is the amount of land allocated to cars not in active use. The average car sits idle 95% of the time. As such, a 2015 report by Ben Joseph found that more than a third of metropolitan areas in the US are dedicated to parking. If self-driving cars fall outside the hands of private owners, repurposing land will have a dramatic effect on how we all interact with space, especially if part of that land is repurposed for green spaces. Environmentally, driverless cars are tipped to reduce congestion. However, researchers warn that if we introduce autonomous vehicles into the status quo, that is self-driving cars, are gasoline powered and privately owned, like most cars today, then we face more traffic and dirtier air. Overall, driverless cars have the potential to deliver large-scale benefits in the form of increased productivity, reduced dead time behind the wheel, and increased safety. However, as with all new disruptive technologies, there will be winners and losers. 
Insurance concerns may also keep driverless cars out of private ownership. Perhaps surprisingly, the physical shapes of cities will feel as great an impact if utilised parking is repurposed. But before our virtual driver rolls up in perfect time to whisk us away to the future, there are significant legislative, financial and technological barriers to make mass market adoption possible. As we come to the end of this video, we at Old Simplified have hoped that you've enjoyed this topic. We're keen to hear what your thoughts are on driverless cars. Do you think they are fast approaching or still some way off? Are they a threat, a benefit or both? Should private ownership be allowed? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video and want to see more, please do consider subscribing. See you in the next video.